quarter reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. You push, command C, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Remishan. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. The harbor. That's the son of a Kvalsun crane. He's right. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. End of recording. It seemed authentic enough, probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Still. There's more going on here than we know. Corti could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. Probably the mountain at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safre. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. The South Safre conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grad and Safre. It has been hot for 12 years with the atrocities piling on, mostly committed by the Grad. Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. A symbol of Soldier of the Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly, inappropriate even. Officer, it's a fine day for questions. Yeah? I did not. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now.
A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yes, looking into your bedroom, miss. Okay. It jitter her fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? Okay. Do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Unfortunately, no. But if I were to guess, long enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. Shit. I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. She does. She must have some idea. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? Honestly, I have no clue. Yet, maybe it's something she's keeping for a later move, when she's more sure of herself. Huh. This isn't good. She's straight as a stick, suddenly. She feels like quarry, encircled. Her eyes dart to the door. Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. Mm hmm She's lost in thought. Eyes narrowed. Forehead furrowed. All right. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. This does not surprise her. Did he? I never said he was a good man or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care, if anything. She sounds amused. Mm, where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. A memory surfaces in her tired neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Kohali style? He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little kohoi. It wasn't his... everything. Yes, w was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things then integrated them into his idea of normalcy to keep on living until they just sort of turn into his um uh... what's the word i'm looking for she's quite observant about the human character trained to observe even People who go to university know how to use words like internalize and integrate, officer. 
Now, what was that expression? There's more to this. She has an index in her head of pathologies and how to exploit them. I can almost see her turn the pages. You can trust Pillar Bookhead, by the way. As far as I can tell, he's not singing to her tune. The only one besides me. Running joke. I was gonna say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. He was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. When he said he was done, and done mentally, it didn't sound like a joke. It sounded like a deeply troubled man. Well, maybe I pieced him back together with my magical personality. Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up Soldier of the Apocalypse style. She wouldn't. She doesn't have the full hoy in her. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease, as much as a man like him could be. There is a small measure of pride in her that she could quell the rage in such a being. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Not my favorite topic, but okay. How about we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lely's dad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lelystad. That's a good start. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. In Oranje, officer. 
It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. The Leilstad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gottwald. Executive summary. Cows, silos, and wheat. Aranye? Aranye's map of waterways? This fits with his tattoo. This means his race was occidental, which fits the statements of another witness. Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranien Reik, I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranie. It was bad habits. Sex. Alcohol. Speed. Probably also Sildenafil. And violence. No love for Mother Aranye. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making money, killing people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. A people person. A small platoon leader. Certainly not a patriot. Mm-hmm. There is nothing on Moindi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Oranya did bring us together. In loathing. I love Ravishal, though. I hope she loves me, too. A column of air encircles her, brushing gently on the metallic silver fabric that covers her shoulders and her long, slender arms. The feeling dissipates. The cold passes. The woman's eyes follow yours to the piece of notebook paper. He was 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Right again, officer. This feels so just. Like there is righteousness in the world. Points are good. Have one, you old dog. Before we all die. Blue. L light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. 
and he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. It's clear she was very much attracted to him, and still is. Of course. He was the most strangely beautiful man I've ever been with, and I mean that. And now, he's dead. A pity. Ah, oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember? It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made it oily, not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. No. Okay, sure. Here you go. What else are we missing, officer? Oh, that. It's clear she liked it. Quite a lot, yes. Sure, service history. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranis lit? Yes. This is the very essence of Oranis lit. A moment's respite. Dark and hopeless is the struggle itself. He's smoking and drinking, of course, and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, what was this, baby? And he says, that was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands, and on other islands too, all of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. It is when you're high. It can be very exciting then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. Why do you ask? Just have her answer the question. Don't give explanations. I don't think he enjoyed dying, officer. He had too much left to do. Too many third world conflicts. Couldn't tap out just yet. Everything checks out here. It's all A-OK. -okay. Good answer. No, it doesn't check out. Can't you see she's clearly avoiding something here? That's a strange thing to suggest. The lady is as fair and just. Is the Union communist? There are a couple of shades pinker than that, no? Social Democrats? They're not hardcore in that way, is what I'm trying to say. 
What are we talking about anyway? This politics shit is a lot in the morning. Is it even morning? I think she's just tired. She doesn't know what you meant by that. And can you blame her? You could blame her. A little. It was a pretty straightforward question that she refused to answer. A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil. Hear that? Sildenafil. Just like you suspected. You have a great nose for this stuff. It's for maintaining an erection. Uppers are vasoconstrictors, so that feat becomes problematic. Because you're a scientist, of course. How much does the toxicology report cost the police of Revachol? I can do it for half of that. Save you some money, make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss. But we'll manage without your help for now. Good for you. What do you think it will tell us? I don't know how a semen sample works, officers. How many days after intercourse does it have to be? I don't even know if he had sex with someone else. We didn't go steady. Is she avoiding anything? Technically not. Technically not. Come on, man. Listen. You can't trust them. It's just you and me. All right. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp, like a mini dagger. The petal crumbles on contact. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Sambo style? Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer. Because of the wind? Or an admirer? Admirers? I'm too old to be a debutante. And this place is no fashionable society. Question avoided. Let's conclude that she has admirers. Plenty of them. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality, he was 42 years old? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Yes? Do you want to know the truth? To the laboratorium, 